Okay, here's question three on the higher non-calculator paper. First things first, let's read the question. Paula wants to buy, oh, sorry, Paula wants to find out how much money people spend buying CDs. So she wants to find out how much money people spend buying CDs. She uses this question on a questionnaire. Okay, so she uses this question on a questionnaire. How much money do you spend buying CDs? Okay, and here are the options, uh, 10 to 30, 30 to 50, 50 to 70, and more than 70. Write down two things wrong with this question. Okay, this is a standard question, right? And again, it's pretty obvious, once you know how, right, what is wrong with this questionnaire. First of all, in the question, there's no time frame. So, there's no time frame. in the question. Now what that means is how much money do you spend buying CDs in a week, in a month, in a year, right? So there needs to be a time frame. And also, um, in terms of the option boxes, there are overlapping options. And what I mean by that is if somebody says I spent 30 pounds on CDs, which box are they going to take? Are they going to take this one, 10 to 30, or are they going to take this one, 30 to 50? They're overlapping. And the same with this one here. If somebody chose 50, they could either choose, take this box or this box. So they are overlapping. Options. Okay, so overlapping options in terms of the boxes that you have to tick. There's also another reason that you could actually pick. You could say that there's no option for less than 10. There's no option for less than 10 pounds. What if somebody spends five pounds on CDs, right? There's no box to tick for that. So that's another reason you could have put there. This type of question is pretty standard. Make sure you know how to do it and make sure you're familiar with the possible answers you could put. Going on to part B. Paul asks 100 people in a CD store to do her questionnaire. Right? She asks 100 people in a CD store to do her questionnaire. Her sample is biased. Explain why. Okay, so the reason for why her sample is biased, it's a bit pretty obvious in terms of just using a bit of common sense, really. She's asking 100 people in a CD store to do her questionnaire. These people are likely to buy CDs, right? So they're already going to buy CDs. It's very unlikely that somebody would say, well, no, I'm not going to buy a CD or I don't spend any money on CDs. So that's what I'm going to put. Um, the people are in a CD store and so are more likely to buy CDs. Okay, anything to that effect, right, where you indicate that it's biased because they're in a CD store, right? You might need to, you might want to indicate that she should ask people outside of a CD store or not in that surroundings. But this answer here is adequate and according to the mark scheme, it will give you the full marks for this. This question is worth three marks. It's a pretty standard question. Make sure you know how to answer it. Make sure you do get it.